Welcome back to Small Press Expo 2012 2012 and all that stuff. My name is Joe. I'm Rusty. And we're here with... Jeff. And... Adam. Jeff and Adam, guys. Now, why are you here at SPX, other than just because you have nothing else to do? Mostly because I have nothing else to do, but... Uh, yeah, here to sell my new book, uh, Burning Building Comics, right here. Uh, debuted here at SPX 2012. The collection got them shipped directly from China. Whoa. Uh, just, they arrived uh, yesterday morning. I saw the first one yesterday morning. Wow. Yeah. It was so you just see them and then you have to part with them. Uh, yes, oh. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, they're all gone except for one. So, yeah, I sold out. It's exciting. Uh, yeah, it's great. So the reception to this has been... Really, really great, yeah. The, just the, the show's been packed this year. Tons of people coming in, lots of people looking for something new and exciting, and uh, had a great reaction from everybody when they saw the book. I have a, a little building display that I built at my table that uh, people got to come by and take a look at. And So, uh, yeah, it's been great, and it's just been really busy and really good reaction from everybody. So, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Now, when you originally did this, you did it as individual issues. Right. And they could be displayed vertically. That's right. But this actually puts them right into a position where they need to be, right? Right. Yeah, it's a little tricky because uh, uh -huh. let's go ahead and show everybody how it works because yes. this is the cover to the book, but in, if you want to read it, you got to fold it open, and then it opens again this way, and then you see the stories of the book. So each row of panels is a story in the building. So it's a 10-story building, and the guy on the bottom floor sets a fire, and then the people... Or the fire spreads and you find and you follow all the people's adventures trying to get away from the fire. Now when you originally did the books, obviously you knew what you, were, you, you, what you were setting out as for an overall project because they were designed with each other in mind. Mm -hmm. But did you ever have a collection like this a plan? Not really. In, uh, I mean, not exactly. I mean, I knew that, yeah, I had the format of the mini comics in mind the whole time. And then in the back of my mind, I probably had an idea of what would I do with a collection. but. Uh, I hadn't really gotten that far, and then towards the end, I thought it would be really cool if I made just one really tall collection, mm -hmm. but the, the logistics of that didn't really make any sense. It's impossible to store, it's impossible to ship, nobody would want to carry it, and so all that kind of stuff. So I, I had to figure out a way to make it small enough to be roughly the same size as a normal comic. So it's only a little bit taller than a standard graphic novel. Now. Uh how did this project book come about? Now I understand there's a kick. There was a Kickstarter. There was a Kickstarter. Yeah, I had uh, Kickstarter. Uh, I did a little video for the Kickstarter, like you do, and uh, raised the funds through that, selling the copies in advance, and then people got their individual special rewards that I made up for that, and then so that got me enough money to pay for the printing in advance, and to uh, pay for a large print run and to do it in full color. The originals were in black and white and just printed yeah. in Xerox, and so. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get the, the funds for Kickstarter because if you don't get your funds, you don't get any of the money. Right. So uh, when I started the campaign, it was still all in black and white. And I wasn't going to do all the work of coloring it if I wasn't going to get it printed. So I waited until I found out it was funded. And then when it got funded, I had to get to work coloring it. And <laughs> I underestimated how long that would take. And my brother helped me color it. And it's uh, in the computer and it was it was probably six months worth of work just oh, doing wow. the coloring and I have a newfound appreciation for computer for colors colors and <laughs> comics because that's a slog that's a hard gig yeah I mean imagine your day is kind of set ahead of you it's just yeah. filling this white filling this white and yeah and especially with a book about fire right uh, yeah, your palette's kind of going to be limited for the most part <laughs> that's right lots of orange lots yeah. of orange <laughs> lots of beautiful beautiful destructive orange <laughs> that's right that's right so, what do you have? Do you have another project planned, or? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I've, mostly there's a book uh, called Slutty Yoda I'm working on. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I'm excited about this book. We've we heard just, there may be cosplay involved. Uh, uh, at yeah, some point yeah, on that's it. true. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited. Uh, and actually, <laughs> yeah, all of my time has recently been going into getting the book done and uh, getting ready for SPX, and I'm overcommitted to a ton of other stuff. Uh, I help organize a, a, a smaller a comic show in Chicago called Cake. Yeah. Um, and that was very time consuming. And uh, I have a couple kids. And so that all 
works towards what a slowing terrible down. time for children. Yeah, I know. Al <laughs> works towards slowing down, putting out new comics. So <laughs> you kids are ruining my comic production. Yeah. <laughs> if you listen to the relatives, they all say, "Well, you should just do a whole new series of all buildings: a hospital, a firehouse, a, right. a police station, and this is all, your whole career. Boom, just buildings after buildings. The building man. You're the building yeah. comic guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 artistic Every... integrity isn't a big thing in my family. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, and like you have to come up. How do I display like a teepee like this? <laughs> <laughs> Multi-level right. TP, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Like, well, it's selling, right? It's good, right? Yeah. Capitalize on that. But I got a bunch of these I got to get through. So, yeah, I sold 50 here, but there's uh, 950 more on the boat from China. Nice. So, got to get through all those somehow. We'll be hitting a lot of shows. Well, tell us um, about Cake. Yeah, that's your show. Sure. You're behind that. Yeah, Cake, there's five organizers of us in Chicago. We're all comics makers in some sort of way. And... Uh, you know, we, a lot of us would go to SPX and we'd go to Mocha or we'd go to Ape. And, you know, it was very expensive to travel this far. And so we were lamenting the fact that Chicago had so many great artists uh, in that community, but we didn't have a local show. And there actually was a show in Chicago years and years ago called ICE. It was the Independent Comics Expo. And that was, uh, that, back then, it, I, think, I believe, like Jessica Abel was one of the organizers and Dan Close was one of the guests at the early shows. And they did it for two years. Uh, second year they did at the Cultural Center in Chicago, and but then after that there's like some sort of internal struggle and they stopped doing oh. it. But that was way back in the day, uh, and it had been I think 15 years since there had been a show, oh, wow. an in, uh, alternate comic show in Chicago. So um, we had we planned for like two years to put on this to put on cake. It took us forever just to decide on a date, Fine, scheduling a date because there's so many shows. With nothing now. that conflicts. Right. In con season, yeah. yeah. And we ended up doing it on Father's Day, so <laughs> we had to conflict with fathers. But you have a new so child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Uh, so, but yeah, so we had five of us that were all really dedicated and putting it together. We all pitched in and uh, pulled it off, and it went off really well. It was a big success. No major fires broke out, and uh, it no was deaths. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, none. No, no <laughs> reported deaths, <laughs> and there was free cake. Nice. There's free for cake. exhibitors. I mean, that's yeah. kind of like Truth the burden you're gonna right. you're gonna bear that burden now every year with the show. Yeah. Right. Well, hey, it's all right. You set a cake precedent. And hey, it wasn't SPX very good. Has cake. The, SPX has the chocolate fountain. Yeah, it's the chocolate fountain. You guys yes. have the cake now. We have the cake. That's right. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. They should really call the show Chocolate Fountain Expo. They should. Yeah. You know, I've lobbied for that yeah. for for years before there was even a chocolate fountain. Yes. I just thought that would roll off the tongue better. Yeah. That's what gave them the it's idea to bring in the chocolate they, fountain. They were like, yeah. hey, we might not change the name. We should right. actually have a chocolate fountain at this chocolate right. fountain expo show. <laughs> now, Adam, you say you, you, know, you help with the coloring? I did. A tad, yes. A tad? Uh, well, you know. Uh, I, I, I don't have kids or anything, but I'm busy too. I got my own. <laughs> no. no, if you don't have kids, you got a leisure <laughs> yeah. hour all day. That's yeah. what he thinks. Yeah, that's what I, think. I helped out as much as I could. Uh, it is, yeah, it's one of those yeah, time consuming little. But I, I, I find it pleasurable. It was actually kind of zen, kind of just slowly accomplishing that's one page. you didn't do that much. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, my. But it, it was, this yeah. This one page is very it, zen. I always like to help him as much as I can. Uh, he got blessed with all the, the, the art in the family. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're twin brothers, for God's sakes. And he got all the artistic ability, and I could move a mouse around it. So. But Adam uh, comes with me to the shows, and he's a great moral support, and he helps sell the books. Yes, and, you yes. know, it gives me a chance to go to the bathroom. It's fantastic. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> now, first thing I want to say is I understand the nature of the coloring being a satisfying experience. Yes. Because there are a lot of these little, not menial, but repetitive tasks you can do that you can accomplish little things, and it's like, yes. not bad, you know? Yeah, you can look at it and say, I, yeah. I did that today. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, when are you going to do your comic? Come on now. My comic, I, well, hmm. you Come had on. a series of comics. I had a series of comics, <laughs> which took place uh, during a building uh, not on shows. fire. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure SPX I've done some at SPX. Like, uh, probably the second year I did SPX, yeah. I did some uh, comics, yeah. Yeah, uh, they were mainly making fun of the, how bad the experience was for Jeff at the time. Yeah. Uh, when I was selling no comics, yeah. Well, yeah, only in that respect. It was yeah. a great show, and it was always fun, but yeah. uh, lamenting his lack of sales. Uh, stick and figures, yeah. I'm, I'm glad, yeah, oh, yeah, I can't draw. But I'm glad that the that reign of terror has ended, and... The comic is selling well. <laughs> I don't have to. I don't have to bother yeah. tormenting you with my terrible. Comic. Well, hopefully, no time, yeah. hopefully you'll have more terrible experiences, and then <laughs> well, you'll feel that artistic you drive. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah, my 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 uh, turmoil is your inspiration. That's right. You're my muse. Your pain is his muse. <laughs> it's a cycle. Now, don't don't knock stick figures. That's our comic that we do is sure. all stick figures. You can get a, a lot across. With yes. the stick Absolutely. Figure. Some yes. eyebrows. Yeah. Couple yeah. eyes. 
the all I need is anger. That's all I need. Yeah, the rest of it's just <laughs> masturbation. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. Right. It's stick figure masturbation is so hard to depict. <laughs> it is. Because it just looks like a pile of twigs eventually. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, what's happening here? I'll have something to show you later on. Oh yeah. Oh. Now, if someone was interested in buying your book, yes. and they're not here, and it's sold out now anyway, yes. how, yeah, can, so they go about, here. how yeah. can they go about acquiring one? Well, uh, it's probably going to take about a month for the, the rest of the shipment to arrive, and then they'll be up on my website, jeffscomics.com. And uh, I'm looking right now, investigating what kind of distribution I'm going to do. So hopefully I can get some distribution, get them out into shops, and be able, people will be able to find them all over the country. Fantastic. Very and cool. when do we find your pornograph pornographic stick figure comics? Where can we go? Uh, that's available on my website, jeffreybrownscomics.com. <laughs> nice. Uh, just check that out. Uh, I'm a big fan of your previous work. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming to talk to us. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. And Appreciate good luck not selling any more books because you sold out. All right, thanks. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>